Thank you, Ali, for a great introduction. Let me introduce our other panellists, Dr. Amy Hockadell from the Connected Places Catapult, who's a new um, Saudi-British Joint Business Council member. Welcome. And Dr. Najat. Um, Dr. Najat um, Benchiba Savinius, who is um, uh, also a close friend of SBJBC, and uh, I think you deal primarily with family offices, uh, long experience in the GCC. So perhaps, Najat, let me just start with you. Um, Ali's just given us a great introduction on the um, market growth of SMEs in, in Saudi, and I think it's true to say since I've been at SBJBC, JBC, there's been a, a real sea change in Saudi. I mean, not just SMEs, but also entrepreneurship more generally. And I do remember, you know, when I started this job, you know, everyone wanted to work for Sabic and Aramco. Maybe they still do, but I, <laughs> I've also seen, you know, really, you know, young graduates now coming out and starting their own companies. And it, it's really fantastic to see that and I have, have employed a number of them in SBJBs including your, your daughter in fact who was uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, but anyway the question is um, now Jack can you sort of put the, um, the Saudi market growth in, in perhaps a regional perspective and how that compares to other developments in the region? Yes, thank you. Thank you, Chris, and thank you for inviting me to speak today. Uh, well, as we've heard uh, today, um, Saudi Arabia has become quite a success story um, across all industries uh, and uh, sectors and has um, done away with the, uh, the image of boom and bust in terms of the oil growth, gas growth, etc. So um, Saudi Arabia now is carving itself out in the region, the MENA region, um, and I'll also say globally as a key player which has been uh, orchestrated by His Royal Highness the Crown Prince that has um, delved deep into the national transformation plan of a few years ago and has uh, amplified the Vision 2030. But I think the, uh, the Vision 2030 has become a bit of a misnomer in the sense that certain of those targets have been smashed already. We've reached the targets of women in the labour force, we've reached targets of um, increasing GDP, etc. Um, and the, the ecosystem of um, SMEs, uh, entrepreneurship, um, uh, you know, the, the, the VC uh, scene has really, really accelerated in, in the last two years, which don't forget, we've been plagued globally um, by a, a pandemic, which has not sought in any way, um, hasn't really uh, affected Saudi Arabia to the degree of other countries within the region and globally. So um, Saudi Arabia has really forged itself globally as a key player, um, and, and the vision has come to life uh, really quite quickly. Um, in terms of SME growth, there's been rapid growth. In terms of the, the VC capital that's available in Saudi Arabia, money is there. Money is there, the vision is there, the blueprint is set for domestic growth of SMEs and domestic growth of um, you know, seed capital being available for uh, entrepreneurs um, that seek to um, launch new products, services, etc. in a very nascent uh, uh, kingdom of Saudi Arabia. Don't forget, this is only a few years old that we're seeing this emergence of, you know, great, um, great growth and acceleration uh, for the kingdom. Um, you know, the last few years we've seen great acceleration also in Egypt, for example, um, in terms of entrepreneurship, sourcing um, and maintaining um, seed capital for entrepreneurs. And now Saudi Arabia is almost eclipsing um, those, um, uh, those countries in the MENA region. So it's, uh, it's, it's become quite rapidly a success story. And that's for men and women. Um, so women also traditionally, you know, I lived in Saudi Arabia the very first time I moved there was in 96, I'm showing my age. Um, and back then there were you know, women that were um, launching products, but they were, they were then, I would say, the cupcake um, uh, enterprises. But now it's become, with the lack of guardianship, with the acceleration of uh, corporate reform, with the um, availability of seed capital for um, you know, uh, enterprises, women as well as men now are really accelerating the growth of the kingdom. And as we saw earlier in the data points, SMEs are a large uh, engine growth uh, for the kingdom. And we must never lose sight of the, the importance of SMEs um, in the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. Thanks for that. So, now you touched on venture capital funding. I think I saw something in, in, on LinkedIn the other day, that, uh, and Dr. Nabil, I'm sure, will mention this 250% 
growth in venture capital funding in the first half of this year, which is amazing. So that, that is a sign. Um, so just moving on to, to, to Amy, I mean, your fairly recent entrant to the Saudi market, I think it's true to say, and, uh, and by all means, just mention a little bit about Connected Places Catapult, but how do you see the prospects for linking the two SME ecosystems a bit more? And this is something that's close to my heart. Um, as you know, we're working on a um, Saudi UK tech hub, which I can mention a bit later on. But um, could you just g g talk about your experience so far? Absolutely. Thank you, Chris. Uh, so the Connected Places Catapult is an organization that perhaps not many have, people have heard about, but it is a part of the UK government, part of the business ministry. And the role of the Catapult uh, is to accelerate growth around innovation areas. In particular, we look at mobility in the built environment. That really kind of encompasses everything happening in the urban space. So when you think about how people move around cities and live in cities and work in cities, you're thinking about the future of cities and how we live in them. And that's really what our organization is meant to drive. So we take away the barriers to innovation that are sometimes their um, kind of traditional ways of doing business so that we can inject more innovation uh, into the urban space, especially now when we have the challenges that we have looking at global pandemics, how do we live differently, how do we address climate change, cities are at the front line of those types of things. And so that's what the Connected Places Catapult does kind of on a day-to-day -day basis. Now much of that is focused in the UK and we're looking at the different regions of the UK and how we level up. Uh, for my team, we're looking at how do we take all the good work around innovation that's happening in the UK and partner with people abroad that have that same vision. And so when we look around for places that we think uh, have the propensity and capacity to be good partners with UK businesses, um, certainly Saudi Arabia has come up the list um, exponentially. Um, the catapult in the UK government has a very strong pillar around economic growth that's focused on innovation uh, and technology. And when you look at uh, Saudi Arabia and you look at the vision, Vision 2030, um, but the vision that has come out of some of the giga projects, things like NEOM, this is definitely looking at innovation and technology in the future of an economy, and that's what it's built upon. So for our organization, what we're looking to do in, in Saudi Arabia is to create long-term partnerships. Uh, so we're not necessarily coming to just do a project. Um, I know there's lots of business uh, open in Saudi Arabia right now, but what we want to create are strong partnerships between our two kingdoms that facilitate kind of a back and forth flow of SMEs. So we want to grow each other's SMEs. We want your SMEs to come to the UK and our UK SMEs to be able to come to Saudi Arabia. And for our organization, we feel the best way to do that is to create really strong, large-scale consortium projects that we can do together. So there's a couple different benefits of doing uh, projects like that on a larger scale. One is that it's hard to procure innovation. So right now, when you look at uh, some of the projects that are going on, um, both in the UK and then around Saudi, and when people think about things like smart city, they might think, let's procure um, smart lighting, let's procure smart water meters, let's procure, and they break it down to individual technologies. But when you have a large scale consortium that's faced with a challenge led approach, how do we diversify an economy that can accelerate net zero transition? That's more of a challenge led approach and not going to the end result. Those are the types of things we can tackle together. We can build large scale consortiums around things like decarbonization, um, around hydrogen energy. Uh, there's so many different opportunities and you avoid that, um, that traditional kind of being stuck in a procurement process. In addition, what we do when we have two consortiums for bilateral business engagement is we pair our SMEs together. Uh, so they're not working in one place alone. Our companies want to come there and establish uh, for the long term. They're looking for long term business interests. And so if our organization is able to uh, create that initial large scale project, those initial partnerships, then we feel that those are partnerships that can move into the future between our two kingdoms, between our two um, ecosystems for SMEs and entrepreneurs and for innovation. We think that Saudi Arabia really has the potential to be a great innovation partner um, for the UK. Thank you, Amy. 
and you know, we had a very successful um, renewable energy forum the other day, which uh, Amy hosted a, a meeting to develop um, a proposal for a, a hydrogen hub to pool expertise between the two countries. I think that's a really great example. So, um, Ali, coming on to you. Thank you for the presentation. And um, no, clearly, you know, as I said earlier, there has been a, a sea change. And I remember working with Monshat and former governors and introducing them to the ecosystem here. But how about um, business environment reform? Could you say a little bit about some of the developments on that front and how that has impacted on SMEs? Yeah, I, I think, uh, in fact, we were just talking uh, during lunch uh, about the new uh, Ministry of uh, Commerce regulations that are uh, meant to um, uh, ease uh, doing business in Saudi Arabia for for uh, you know Saudi companies or foreign and foreign companies uh, improve governance in uh, 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 in the environment and uh, support the growth of family companies because family companies we know about this you know fourth generation we start running into trouble so there's uh, there's all kinds of new regulations that have been introduced that can address a lot of the uh, uh, underlying uh, uh, maybe uh, uh, we say lack of clarity. Uh, and, uh, no, but I'm, I'm very happy uh, uh, about the investment environment in Saudi Arabia. First, that the fundamentals. I mean, people are talking about oh, geopolitics. And when has geopolitics not been an issue? Uh, I don't, you know, I'm 60 years old, and there's always been something going on. And, and uh, people, people always uh, introduce. Uh, uh, meetings and discussions uh, saying, well, in, in today's ever-changing environment or in today's, uh, you know, difficult environment, well, environment is always difficult. I think that the fundamental thing when we're talking about investment and talking about doing business in a certain environment is really what are the expected returns versus the underlying risks. And Saudi Arabia, I don't think, has ever been, ever been better, uh, really, in terms of, uh, in terms of the, the vision 2030, in terms of the government's uh, uh, goals and uh, aspirations uh, declared, and in terms of, uh, well, I mean, let's face it, oil at $100 uh, dollars a barrel also helps us uh, move towards uh, achieving those uh, aspirations. So I think, uh, you know, I said I was 60 years old, and I, I don't think, I don't remember a, a better environment during my working career to invest in, in Saudi Arabia. And we actually see a lot of Saudis uh, bringing money from uh, abroad, from their portfolios, because they don't see the returns that they, they can get in Saudi Arabia. That in itself, you know, people putting their money where their mouth is, is, is uh, uh, the biggest uh, uh, proof of it. Um, and, uh, you know, uh, institutions like Munchaat, Munchaat literally in Arabic means uh, establishments. Uh, uh, this again is is a commitment from the government. It's not just saying, oh, we have to support SMEs because they are the bedrock of employment for the private sector and all that. No, they're spending a lot of money. Uh, in the past 15 years, uh, Munchaat plus the uh, programs associated with it, uh, there's one important program called Kafala, where uh, Munchaat will uh, guarantee a part of the loan to uh, uh, the SME from a bank. Uh, these kinds of things. In the past 15 years, more than 80 billion riyals has been spent supporting SMEs in one shape or another through government programs. So, um, and and the environment has never been friendlier for foreign investments. And I'm not talking about, you know, when we talk FDIs, we think about oh, refineries, mega projects. No, just, uh, just uh, uh, foreign investors coming to invest in Saudi Arabia in all kinds of uh, sectors of the economy. Uh, that is, uh, there is, it's a very welcoming environment now and a very profitable uh, environment and what, what Amy was saying about uh, connecting SMEs with their expertise from different markets I think you should take that to Munchaat because this is exactly the kind of thing one of the things that Munchaat does is not only just you know looks at the SME and, and just hands out support they look at the, what they're doing the way they're doing business uh, what kind of uh, support they need, technical, otherwise, and and they help that. I mean, Munchaat helps their investment in the SMEs. So what you what you were describing falls right into uh, doing that. Thanks, Ali. Um, there's still a perception, uh, I think, you know, from some of the feedback we have from our members, smaller members, that it is still a difficult um, market entry process and. Um, 
I know Abdul Aziz is um, a great friend and, and great progress, I think, from MISA on the investment licensing procedure. Uh, but sometimes it's what follows, you know, the number of steps that are needed to get the commercial license. But, um, Najat, how, what, what sort of feedback do you have from SMEs? Is, is the perception a reality or, um, or do, do, you, do you see a, a, a change over the past few years? Yeah, that's a very, a very valid point. Um, I think there is some still sort of outmoded uh, perceptions that Saudi Arabia is impenetrable still. That despite it sort of going up the ease of doing business index quite rapidly, um, in layman terms and in practical considerations, it's still quite difficult to access the market of Saudi Arabia in terms of if I have a company, um, how do I access the market? Uh, with whom do I speak to open a bank account? Um, how can I uh, meet, meet other fellow sort of SMEs? As, Amy mentioned, um, how can I penetrate the industry or the sector I'm targeting? Um, how can I um, operate? Do I have to open up a, uh, as per the um, initiative that was launched uh, recently, for, for, for companies that seek to uh, open an office in Saudi Arabia? That is the only way you can access the market. Um, so for those companies from the UK, for example, who want to take a punt, I'm not sure that whether they should go out and invest heavily in opening up offices in Saudi Arabia. Um, um, uh, higher local talents, of which there is a lot, um, and then it sort of fails. So how are they, in terms of risk assessment, um, how can they take that step forward yeah. um, to, to try to penetrate the market, um, having all their sort of um, uh, practicality uh, and considerations, um, you know, addressed in terms of, you know, are they going to be covered in terms of insurance, in terms of uh, mitigating risks to open offices and companies, etc., in, in, in the kingdom? So I think that there are real practical concerns from outside the kingdom on how they can best streamline their efforts and where to seek knowledge, where to seek uh, advice, um, legal legal legalities, for example, um, the, the new corporate legal reforms taking place, new regulatory climate. You know, these are all things which are happening at quite considerable pace, which um, is quite difficult to ke keep up with um, from outside the kingdom. So I think, you know, a smart pack, um, uh, and, you know, welcome to Saudi Arabia, um, you know, a directive may be helpful in terms of embracing FDI from the minor to the major and helping them penetrate the market. Um, and the same goes for women who are looking to invest in, in uh, uh, Saudi Arabia. Women may feel that there is an outmoded, again, an old perception of how it is to, be, you know, to go to Saudi Arabia and to do business. You know, will I be accepted? Um, how are the, is there a cultural misfit? Um, the religion. There are many, many practical considerations that are really, really heavily, you know, um, bearing upon people who want to go into Saudi Arabia and do business. But I think that we need some handholding um, and some practical steps uh, to help them launch uh, in Saudi Arabia before they're sort of catapulted into sort of. Um, uh, uh, before they, they are able to, you know, f you know flourish uh, in the kingdom. Yeah, well, I think you made a very practical suggestion, and actually it's something that came up at our recent biannual meeting, where um, a little summer job, I think, for us is to try and put together such a pack, because there, there is support available. Um, there's institutional support, there's uh, MISA, there's uh, Monshap, but there's also the network we have here today, and uh, the Business Council does um, have the privilege of having a very strong Saudi as well as British membership, so, you know, we, we can help. So um, I know we're pressed for time, but are there any um, immediate um, questions from the audience um, before we go any further? Are we all in the after lunch mode? <laughs> all right, silence. Okay. All right. Uh, uh, oh, there is one. All right. Yeah. Mm, yeah. So the Ministry of of investment has launched the Establish Your Business Overseas uh, Initiative. So basically, uh, what took time earlier for companies to establish is uh, drafting the article of association with the Ministry of Commerce, and that used to be manually. Now, um, the process has changed. Uh, any business owner or an entity that wants to establish a, a presence in Saudi, they file the application online through the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. Uh, they get a number, um, they get the documents uh, and visit the embassy. Um, 
just to uh, identify the or maybe make sure that uh, the identities are, uh, are matching, uh, the ones in the application. Uh, it moves to uh, electronically to the Ministry of Investment. Um, it gets uh, approval right away. And then um, the investor will fill in the article of association fields uh, electronically, and that will be uh, moved right away to the Ministry of Commerce. So it's all automated. And it really cut the uh, the time um, of establishing yep. a stamp document. So yes, much, exactly. Right? Yeah. Yeah. No, so um, yeah. this is the major uh, significant uh, change in, in submitting applications, submitting applications overseas. Yeah. Right. Okay. I think also mm. you know the, we could also apply that to the reverse situation mm. in terms of small Saudi SMEs, entrepreneurs that seeking to collaborate Absolutely. with British yeah. companies yeah. Uh, that, you know, also are thinking of how do I, uh, you know, export my idea? How do I export, for example, e-commerce is growing rapidly yeah. in Saudi Arabia. And there's a huge potential. I mean, they've barely scratched the surface in terms of all the data points that I've come across. So also it's looking at the reverse situation for young um, enterprising Saudis that are seeking to do um, joint collaborations with British uh, expertise here, British companies, and it's the ease of doing business and penetrating our market from the Saudi, uh, Saudi end. And that, this is just a quick plug, you know, I mentioned the Saudi UK tech hub we've established in the business council in its early days, but this is a platform to connect innovation hubs with entrepreneurs and investors. Um, we, we launched this with um, the Saudi Minister of Commerce, in fact, at an a e-commerce summit, which we partnered with the National Competitiveness Council in, in May. And um, we, we um, are, are going to plan a series of activities at both ends and from the autumn, including a fintech uh, mission. Then. But, um, but just come, I think, perhaps in more sort of concluding words, I mean, what, what sort of tips can you give Ali to, to, to a foreign company coming in? I mean, I don't think there's any size fits all, but uh, no, what would you recommend? Tell them it's come in. Yeah. Would, <laughs> no, uh, well, talking about, you know, people's fears about, you know, there are no barriers to entry uh, no. to Saudi Arabia, but there are, you know, things you, you need to do. And at the end of the day, when you talk about local regulations or, or whatever, have you ever met a businessman anywhere in the world who didn't complain about his local regulations, about the difficulty of doing business in his country, and I ought to go somewhere else if I, if I came in here as a foreigner? In fact, Saudis uh, sometimes complain uh, that you know, the government is giving more facilities to foreigners to come and invest here than Saudis who are living here. And hello, you know, but it's uh, it's true. Uh, Saudi Arabia is bending over backwards to encourage uh, foreign investment to come to Saudi Arabia. Uh, people, it, it's it's like we told the world, well, we're open for business now, and people are having really, really, and you know, let's uh, let's uh, uh, feel the water. Uh, no, it, it is true. Uh, the, the, the presentation that Mr. Abdelaziz did was too big, frankly, for the time. Uh, I mean, there was so much in it. And so many. Uh, no, uh, but, but I'm saying that there are so many facilities that the government is doing uh, to uh, to attract investment in Saudi Arabia, and they are not going to, you know, go through this trouble only to make a foreign investor. Uh, we we go through even lending foreigners' money to come and invest it in Saudi Arabia. I mean, how many countries say they, they do that? Um, during COVID and, you know, staying on the subject of SMEs, for instance, and SMEs, I'm not talking about just Saudi SMEs, SMEs can be mixed, uh, uh, mixed equity, it could be foreigners, but an SME is an SME. And during the COVID lockdown, uh, uh, the government through various uh, uh, institutions or through various arms went through the trouble of making sure the SMEs are not affected, they're still afloat and they went to all the banks and told the banks that to give the SMEs a payment holiday uh, during the uh, COVID because you know there was no revenue coming in, told banks to give them a payment holiday and they paid the banks the interest for the SMEs for the extended loans. And they came to us, and one of our companies is, qualifies in, as an SME, and I never dealt with Munchaat or, or anyone else from the government. We, we always finance it ourselves, but we qualify for government support for a, a payment holiday, and uh, we, we took it. So uh, there, there is, you know, there, there is not only a desire to build 
the segment of, of the business, but there's also a desire to make sure it succeeds, yeah. to see it uh, prosper. And I think it's a great opportunity and a great period of time in, in business in Saudi Arabia yeah. for not only Saudis, but uh, international investors to come and, uh, you know, and benefit from it. Thank you. Yeah, and, and, and uh, fair to say we do have very useful dialogue with MISA, you know, when there are issues that um, are to be raised, um, you know, the more specific we can be, the more likely we get a, a reaction, but, um, you know, that's been very useful. Amy, any concluding uh, remarks from you on uh, yeah. I mean, I think that when you look at the opportunities that are available in Saudi Arabia, it's it's a very forward-looking economy, it's a visionary economy, uh, it's an innovation-based economy, and so there might be a perception that it's difficult to do business if you're thinking about the old way of doing business, which is for a company to go to a market and point your PowerPoint at someone and say, this is what we do, uh, buy our thing. Um, and actually, the, the, what's being built now, both in the UK and in Saudi Arabia, is a different type of economy. Uh, so the point your PowerPoint at people um, and hope that you get a contract is not going to work anymore. We build a scaffolding of support um, around all of these organizations where our national governments and the organizations that we've been setting up, like UK Export Finance for Saudi Arabia, uh, Saudi Export Finance, these are all ways of supporting uh, larger scale partnerships. Mm -hmm. That's the way SMEs will be able to enter the market more easily. And so to, in order to do that, they need to seek out this support. Um, I, I suggest that don't think that you have the most innovative project product in the world and just go and try to sell it. Um, we're, we're starting lots of different types of projects and partnerships and organizations that are there to support SMEs, and, and SMEs need to take advantage of that. Um, and in that instance, then I think that there'll be far more opportunities that we can we can do together um, than an individual company trying to enter the market alone. And um, uh, uh, Mr. Alvarez said something that uh, you know you, you've said something that's actually a, a slogan for London, which is London is open. And, and if you've come through the airport, you've seen those signs: London is open, London is open for business, London is open for you know exports, London is open for investment. Um, and you, we've been a new entrant into the Saudi Arabia market, and I've been there multiple times now in the past year, almost once a month, um, which has been wonderful. And the sentiment I get is that Saudi is open. Um, and for someone like me that's kind of a, a bit of a city enthusiast, and I love to see how cities grow and change, and to see the way that uh, a place like Riyadh um, is growing and changing before your very eyes, and the type of innovation and economy that's being built there, you get the sense that Saudi is open. Um, and so I agree, you know, you, you have to go there and experience it, but don't do it alone. Sure. Right. Okay. Now, that's anything final? I think you've said it. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Yes, thank you, Chris. Just, I mean, just to, just to touch base very quickly, um, I, I think that, um, you know, if we look back at the golden age of Saudi Arabia, I think its best years are ahead of it. Um, we've barely scratched the surface in terms of, you know, the, the projects which may be announced later this year at the FII in October. Uh, we, the, the, you know, it's, it's a big, big focus on, you know, Saudi expertise, Saudi knowledge. I mean, more than ever before, Saudis are tertiary educated. They really are bringing their own very much, you know, their own uh, level of expertise and knowledge to, to, to export, actually. So we're also exporting uh, uh, Saudi knowledge. Um, but the best way, I would say, as I agree with, uh, with Amy, is in collaboration. Um, international collaboration, which is the best way forward, I think. So, right, thank you very much. And no, I think what this shows is that SMEs are the, the lifeblood of both of our economies. And, and what's great to us about Saudi is that the family companies like yourself, I think you have the number one commercial registration, is that right, in, in Saudi? So, I mean, that's something. And um, so, but can I say a big thank you to, to all our panelists? And um, I think there's lots that we can do.